O God, our Father, you spoke to the prophets of old of a Saviour who would bring peace. You helped them to spread the joyful message of his coming kingdom. Help us as we prepare to celebrate his birth, to share with those around us the good news of your power and love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. Welcome to another of our YouTube services. This one is for the second Sunday in Advent. And Christmas is fast approaching. I'm so glad that you're not too busy and that you can take some time out for reflection on the themes of Advent. As you can see, I'm here in St. David's Church, Tonareva. Let's begin with an opening prayer. Gracious God, you sent your Son to be the good news for all people, to bring light into a world of darkness and forgiveness to all who are weighed down with sin. Help us to find in him the blessings for which our hearts have been yearning. And may this Christmas time have a deeper meaning for us all. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you, and keep you in the love of Christ. Almighty God, and to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we remember God's presence with us, we take time out to say sorry to God. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. And here are some words of assurance that we are forgiven. May the God of love and power bring you back to himself, forgive you and free you from your sins, and restore you to newness of life by his Spirit. Amen. We all need a forgiveness and a fresh start, so as we take on board the knowledge that God truly forgives, let us start afresh with thankfulness and joy. The Collect for the Second Sunday in Advent. Let us pray. O Lord, raise up, we pray, your power and come among us, and with great might succour us, that whereas through our sins and wickedness we are grievously hindered in running the race that is set before us, your bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. Now Sanjay is going to read our Gospel reading. Reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. 
and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with the water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. And now we come to our sermon. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Words from St. Mark's Gospel right at the beginning, in the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The good news. I wish there was a television channel that only broadcast good news. Generally, we don't get a balance, do we? It's great news when we hear that someone in the family is engaged or expecting a baby. It's great news when a friend tells you they got the job they applied for. On the world stage, it's great news when a plant thought to have been extinct is discovered in Norfolk, or a peace treaty that had been signed is hold, holding firm. There is good news about, but it's often subsumed by the sadness. If you have time, take a look at a photo or a picture that you have in your house, which really speaks to you of good news and blessing. And if you haven't got a picture, then look out of the window or use something else to remind you of good news. Well, we began a new year last Sunday. Advent is the beginning of the church's year. And the way that we uh, celebrate each year is to use a different gospel writer. So last year we were studying Matthew, and now we, here we are with Mark's gospel. Ma Mark begins the gospel saying the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, the word good news was very commonly used in the time of Jesus. It was a word which in Greek was euangelion, or later pronounced as evangelion. And you can see how the word evangelion uh, has come to be, uh, to produce the word evangelism. Euangelion. This was what was said in the time of Jesus, but used in a very different way by the Romans. I read somewhere that the Romans used the term very regularly if they had successfully invaded Gaul, they would shout out, you Angelian, we conquered the Gauls. Imagine the scene in the Holy Land when Mark was writing. It was a terrible time. There had been the destruction of the temple. There had been terrors as the Romans tried to overthrow their adversaries. And they would have said, you Angelian, we have defeated all opposition in Israel. We've brought down the temple. We've destroyed the Jews. You Angelian, good news. Mark is writing when his nation 
has been traumatized. And so it's odd, isn't it, to use that expression, good news. Good news, words that were used by Rome to describe their recent victory. And Mark uses this same expression, good news, euangelion, to begin his writing. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. This is the good news of the Son of God. Wow, what a contrast. I wonder, were Mark's readers ready for this? Now for me, Advent has always been a solemn time, a holy time, low-key and subdued. But I've abandoned all my principles this year. It's no longer to, to be like that for me. It's usually a time for putting our house in order. No carols, no Christmas lights, but not this year. Hasn't 2020 been rather solemn since March? Hasn't 2020 been a little bit like a continuous Advent or a continuous Lent, as I was saying last week? So whether it's decorating the house with all the lights and the decorations or singing carols outside, I'm all for starting the celebrations early. But what, what are we celebrating? What is the good news? What is the good news for you? It says in the Gospel reading, John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. I used to teach, as many of you will know, and I can't count the number of times when I was teaching and dealing with a dispute between pupils, I would say to them, now, say you're sorry. And you know, sometimes we think of repentance as just saying sorry. It's an important part of repentance, acknowledging our wrongdoing. But repentance is much more than that. Repentance is more accurately understood as change or turning, changing direction. When people came to John the Baptist, they were baptized. But more importantly, they were ready to change. And the good news here is the forgiveness that he proclaimed. That is really something to celebrate. I used an expression last week, Christ has come, Christ is come, and Christ will come. And with Christ, forgiveness. Forgiveness has come, forgiveness is come, and forgiveness will come. There is the good news. And it's really about our choice. When John the Baptist was proclaiming in uh, the region of the Jordan and calling people to repentance, they made the choice. They made the choice to jump into the river and to be baptized. They made the choice to repent. It is a matter of choice. It is a matter of free will. The good news 
is that we are given a choice. Do we want to change? What a contrast with the Roman way, a forced invasion, destruction of property, killing and subjugation of the populace. What was the good news for the Romans? Well, it was good news because it spoke of Roman triumph. The good news of Jesus Christ, Son of God, is foretold by John the Baptist. We have a choice, but choosing to repent and change, choosing to follow Christ, brings reward beyond measure. It's really something to celebrate. And when we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ at Christmas, then that is what we're celebrating. God reaching down to us and sharing with us, forgiving and restoring us. Now, this week in the news, we did have some good news. A vaccine has been tested and verified and will be rolled out, first in the healthcare sector. But it has been said that when it is offered to the general public, some will opt not to have it. It seems that even when offered something which is not only safe, but will provide a massive health benefit, some will still opt out. It's unbelievable to me, but people are commenting on that at the moment. Well, I was thinking about this and it seems to me that it is the same with Jesus. It's the same with people's reaction to Jesus Christ. He offers nothing but benefits, including forgiveness. But st some still refuse to be a part of his plan. Some still refuse to receive the good news that is offered. Unbelievable, isn't it? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So shall we say together now the baptismal creed? Do you believe in God the Father, the creator of all? I believe and trust in God the Father. Do you believe in his Son, Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world? I believe and trust in God the Son. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life? I believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayers of intercession are led today by Helen Griffiths. Creator God, we pray for our world and the problems faced by so many of your children, not least as we endure the ongoing pandemic. We pray for all those who live under the threat of war and terrorism, and the poverty which comes in its wake. We pray for those who have little to eat, meagre dwellings and a few material possessions, when we who live in the richer world have so much. Help us to care and to share and to give generously whenever we can, in the same way that you give us your Son, Jesus Christ, at the very first Christmas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, your son Jesus lived an ordinary family life in Nazareth and so you understand the difficulties faced in family life. 
We pray for all those involved in providing support for troubled families and strengthening our community life. As we draw closer to Christmas, we pray for those families who feel their problems increased by the need to provide what they truly cannot afford. And we pray, Lord, for the families who will be split up this Christmas time and will not get the time to share with their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, may your blessing be upon all those who are sick, in pain, anxious or troubled. We ask you to be close to those passing through dark places, to those undergoing treatments at home or in hospital, and to give thanks to all people working in the health service and all those treating them. We especially pray for those within our chaplaincy who are poorly at home or in hospital. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, give rest to those who have gone from our lives to be with you. May they now live the life eternal and rest in everlasting peace in your presence. Strengthen the bereaved with the knowledge of your loving presence in this their time of greatest need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Holy God, we ask you to help us to make this time of true preparation this Advent, in the midst of the rush of life. Help us to find the inner quietness and an awareness of your presence. Let this Christmas be a time when we concern ourselves not so much with material things, but focus more on the spiritual gifts that you give so unselfishly. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. So we now have our announcements. It's such an encouragement when we have feedback from these services. It's so good that you share this time of worship with me. These services are available uh, throughout the week, but premiere on YouTube every Sunday at 10. We have Zoom evening prayer at 6.30 on Sundays and 6.30 on Wednesdays. We're trying to maintain our support of charities despite not having been able to have fundraising events this year. So please, if you can help in any way, please do so. We have a carol service which has been prepared for YouTube and that will be premiering at 7 o'clock on this coming Sunday. So, uh, and it'll be available then uh, right up until Christmas. Everyone's working hard to put together a nativity play and that will be recorded and will be put out before Christmas. And for our church services uh, around Christmas, we are intending to use the same times as usual. So it would be five o'clock in St. Barnabas Church on Christmas Eve, eight o'clock in St. David's Church on Christmas Eve, and 10 o'clock in St. Albans Church on Christmas morning. But we're needing to make lists of people who are intending coming. We've managed uh, during the previous weeks to have people in the churches uh, and uh, distanced in the proper way. But we need to maintain that right throughout Christmas. So let us know if you are wanting to come to church at any of those services. Hopefully, we'll also be doing some carol singing around uh, Tonner Evile. So if you want to be involved in that, let me know. So now we come to our final blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine on you and scatter the darkness from before you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. 
Amen. Our closing hymn is Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending. <laughs> 